I'm showing you the completed garment at the beginning of this video because this video is less about the making of the Miss Maisel project and more about what I learned about myself through the process. But don't worry, at the end of the video, there will be photos of me modeling the full ensemble. All of my materials for the Mrs. Maisel project arrived at the beginning of the year when I was so full of excitement and promise and motivation to complete all of my goals for the year. I had also just received the book Madly Marvelous that I show in part one. This book is full of all of the beautiful costumes from all of the seasons of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And I was so excited to replicate one of her looks, to replicate her vintage style. And so I flipped through this marvelous book and I picked a look. I decided on the look from season one, episode one, that screamed vintage glamour in all of its glory. I loved the powder pink coat with the burgundy lining that matched the hat and the gloves with the hot pink dress underneath. This is the look I wanted to replicate. This was vintage glamour to me. So I began this project very early on January 2nd. I actually started the coat first. It's funny that it's the final installment of this series. Part one was the hat that was started somewhere in the middle of January, that in the gloves. You'll have to watch part one, no, part two to see how that plays out. So I'm not sure exactly where, but somewhere along the way of this project, it just wasn't bringing me any joy. I just wasn't happy about it or excited about it or motivated to learn new skills. For some reason, this project made me not even want to come into my sewing room. The materials were everywhere, half finished garments, and it was like they were trying to say something to me. I'm not sure exactly what that was. And so I just ran. I avoided my sewing room for a couple of weeks at least. And then the urge to sew just couldn't be ignored. So I decided to sew something different. So I went back to my sewing room and I didn't sew right away. I spent the first couple of days going through all of my vintage sewing patterns and all of my fabric, trying to see what spoke to me, what I felt would represent me best. I found this 1950s play suit sewing pattern in my stash in a lovely polka dot fabric and it matched perfectly with some really modern shoes and so I sewed that. I enjoyed the sewing of it, I enjoyed the making of the video, I enjoyed wearing it and so that inspired me for my next make which was a garden party dress using another 1950s sewing pattern and I loved that dress. I will link both of these videos if you want to check them out. Through the making of those two garments and the subsequent videos, I realized that I can make things that I love. I don't have to just make vintage garments or replicate or make inspired by. I can sew vintage, but sew it in a way that is authentic to me and authentic to my style and the lifestyle that I live and the things that I want to wear, my accessories, all of those things. I can sew vintage and still be very modern and very true to myself and, and to my own personal style that is slowly but surely through the process of making these garments and videos developing. So that's what you can expect from me moving forward. You can expect for me to sew things that I love, to make videos that bring me joy, that I'm excited about. I'm not going to make videos because I think they will do well or because they have clickable titles or fabrics that only look good on camera but not necessarily in real life. To make the making of these garments are, are no longer going to influence my design choices, my style, my fabrics, or what I choose to make. I am going to make things that I really love and want to wear. 
And the plus side is to that you all seem to really enjoy those last two videos, the ones that were most me. In the videos, I feel and look more like myself than I think I ever have before in any of these videos. And I think you guys could see that. I think that resonated with you. And I think my joy and excitement came through so much more. And you all responded so much to that. And I thank you. Thank you for that. It was just the push that I needed in the right direction to know that I can be my authentic self and that will mean more to people than me being a great seamstress or this perfect vintage housewife. So here we are in late March working on a coat. So I started this project back in January and I did not think it was going to take this long. I've done parts one and two. The first part was the hat. The second part was the dress, but there were supposed to be gloves and other things involved and nothing quite went as I planned. And I've been putting this coat off for weeks. I do not know exactly why I lost interest in this project. I don't know if it's because it's warming up here in Kentucky and I don't really need a coat or if my last couple of makes have something to do with it. My last couple of makes I have made garments I am really, really proud of, that I'm really in love with, that I love the style of, the fabric of. That is more my style, not Mrs. Maisel's style. I think I am finally developing my style and becoming more aware of what I love and what fabrics look good on me and what silhouettes look good on me. And I'm choosing things that I actually want to wear, not just sewing things because they're in the vintage style. I'm sewing things that are in my style. And so I will link those videos down below if you wanna check them out. I am very proud of them. And so I think that has maybe taken my interest away from Mrs. Maisel project because I'm finally into the style of Drew. So um, I was gonna scrap this, I'm not gonna lie. I was just gonna forget about it and hope that you all did too. But it's been in my sewing room, the footage is on my computer, it's taking up room in my sewing room and taking up space in my head. And I want to get better about completing what I start and so that's what my plan is for today is to get this coat completely finished today and get it behind me but who knows i could really like it who's to say we don't know yet once i see it all put together i may actually really like it but the goal for today is to finish the miss mazel coat and maybe take pictures with it all on today if not i could get to that tomorrow um, and just get this video up this week because I have lots of cool things planned, things that I am super excited about, things that are really what I want to be sewing. So yes, let's get this done. I don't want you to get me wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing replicas or interpretations of certain looks and I'm sure I will probably do more of those in the future. I think intention is everything and I think if you're intending to replicate something because you just really like it or you're really into it is one thing, but creating an exact look or an interpretation of a look in a certain style because you're not sure of your own style, I think that's where it loses the appeal. And so that's the issue here for me. I think I made Miss Maisel's look because I didn't have a clue how to make what I wanted to make or... I just didn't know what I wanted to make for me or how to put it together or what that should look like. And I think I do now. So it doesn't <clears throat> look like there's a lot left to do. I just put the darts in the lining pieces. And now I'm going to base down this collar and I'm going to get out the directions. It's been so long ago since I started working on this i'm not sure exactly where i was when i left off and then we have just the cuffs 
the uh, sleeve facing and then like the facing that goes into the inside of the jacket to cover up this interfacing and I think it should be done don't know but I'm gonna get the directions And so I took all of that in and all of my thoughts on creating and sewing and YouTube videos, all of it changed immensely. And I'm really excited about it. I have so many exciting things planned. I spent more time digging through all of my sewing patterns and fabrics and deciding what my next couple of makes will be. And I'm really, really excited about that. So excited that I really wanted to scrap this project but as you can see, I decided to push through. I really wanted to get this completed because I want to finish what I start and I don't want to judge a project halfway finished because you never know um, what the end outcome is going to be or what you're going to learn in the process. And as I said in the beginning of this video, I learned so much over the almost three months of making this project and I am so grateful for it. Maybe that was the reason why I selected this project and why it took me so long and why everything that happened happened. It was for me to really be able to find out exactly what it is I'm doing here. And now I realize more of what it is I'm doing here. This is my passion project. It takes a lot of time, energy, and resources to make these videos and make these garments. And so I don't want to waste any of that. I want to continue to create things that I am passionate about and that bring me joy and continue to create this community that is emerging here that I am so very thankful for. And I'm very excited for the future of this channel. There are now 4,000 subscribers here and I'm excited for that I think that the more I lean into just being me the more this community here will grow I hope to continue to set the example of doing what your heart desires and not caring what anyone thinks of you or how your interests fit into what's cool or what's not or what's expected or what's not I'm excited to so new things if you want to help this channel grow then i ask that you leave some sort of question or comment or share this video or do any of those things that helps get to my video in front of more eyes if i never gain one more subscriber over the four thousand that are here now that is fine too that is not why i initially started this channel it's not it has nothing to do with my motivation for this channel or going forward. This was for me. This was for me to have a place to be me, to do things that I love and share them with people who have similar interests. I would have never thought how I would really come into my own along the way just from making YouTube videos. So it's been good. So after all of that self-doubt and second guessing and wanting to quit, I ended up really, 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 really liking this. The coat looks great with it. I found the perfect shoes in my closet for it and I really, really, really like this. So I'm glad I stuck with it. There's definitely something to be said for persevering and seeing something through that you started. And so I hope that's your takeaway from this video. So I hope you all enjoyed this series. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I recommend you check those out and you will find them in the Mrs. Maisel Project playlist. I'm really excited for you just to see the journey that I went on while making this. It was one of self-discovery and learning and all of those things. I hope you decide to stick around. There are so many fun things I have planned now that I'm really figuring out my style and who I am and what I like to sew. Um, if you like the video, like the video. Feel free to subscribe and share and all of those good things. And now let's see all of those final photos of the Mrs. Maisel project. I am so glad that I did this project. I love the hat and the coat and the dress. And I think it does look like my style. I think 
the shoes definitely helped tie it all together. And of course, my jewelry choices and my hoop earrings and my hair is in a bun. I think this very much looks like me. And I think what I like is going to be constantly changing. And so will this channel. So stick around and I'll see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come.